Hey guys, Brandon here, and welcome to my signal guide for TrainSim Classics Long Island Railroad. Before we begin, I'd just like to take a moment to introduce myself and my involvement with this project. So starting back in February, I began laying the track for this route from the ground up, and then I immediately rolled over into scripting the signals. It was a long five-month process, many long, crazy hours, and uh, it's nice to see everybody enjoying the final product. I've seen a lot of people confused about how Long Island Railroad does their signals, and this video is being made in hopes to alleviate that confusion. I'm going to go through pretty much everything that there is. Let's begin with some definitions. In order to get a full understanding of what we're going to be discussing today, these key terms need to be defined. So let's start with automatic speed control. ASC is a safety system that is unique to the Long Island Railroad that automatically breaks the train when the cab signal speed decreases, meaning like 70 down to a 40 or whatever it may be, or whenever the train exceeds the posted signal speed on the aspect display unit. Advanced Civil Speed Enforcement System, also known as ACCESS, is a positive train control implementation mandated by the Federal Railroad Administration that enforces track speed limits. So like on a straightaway, if it's 70 miles per hour, access will enforce 70 miles per hour. It also ensures that trains come to a complete stop before a home signal displaying stop. We'll talk more about home signals later. There's different definitions of, uh, or different types of speeds that are referred to on the railroad, such as limited, medium, slow, restricted. Limited speed is unique to zone A which is between Harold Interlocking, which is right around Woodside, and Penn Station. That area is run by Amtrak, and there are different signal types in Zone A, some of which are referencing limited speed. So limited speed is a speed not exceeding 40 miles per hour, and that's unique to Zone A. We'll talk more about it later. Medium speed is a speed not exceeding 30 miles per hour, except within automatic speed control territory. And even then, you won't be allowed to go over uh, 40. Slow speed is pretty much the same thing as medium speed, except it's 15 and up to 30 in ASC territory. Restricted speed, there's a bunch of rules governing how to operate the train at restricted speed. So you may pass a restricted signal and have to operate this way, you may pass a stop and proceed signal and have to operate this way. Basically, you need to be able to bring the train to a complete stop within one half the range of vision. So let's say, for instance, the visibility is really good and you can see, I don't know, a half mile down the track or whatever. You need to be able to stop within a quarter mile of anything that's fouling the track, um, if the next signal is a stop signal, if another train is ahead of you, you could be following a train under restricted speed. This second page of definitions pertains more to the signals themselves. So the first definition is the aspect. The aspect is the way that the signal appears, the lights, the arrangement of the lights. That's all. Then you have the indication, which is what the aspect conveys, the, the meaning behind the aspect. So for instance, in this photo, there is a signal in the top center Red over red is the aspect, that's its appearance. And then that aspect indicates that it's a stop signal. Next you have signal blocks. So a signal block is a length of track that's protected by signals at uh, both ends, and they are of varying lengths. There is no like uniform length. And then there's different types of signals at these locations. You have a normal block signal, which is just a fixed signal. Fixed meaning it is a physical signal that's at the track wayside or mounted above in like a gantry. Uh, the block signal just controls movements through that block. Then you have distant signals, which are fixed signals just like block signals, but what they do is they show you how to approach a home signal. Now a home signal is a fixed signal that protects junctions at an interlocking. So as you're approaching an interlocking, an area that you can switch tracks, you first pass a distant signal, typically. 
And then when you actually reach the interlocking, the signal protecting those junctions is known as the home signal. Now an interlocking, uh, kind of alluded to it in the previous sentences I've been doing, but it's an arrangement of signals and switches, and the signals can't line up to where you're going to have a conflicting movement. Like, it's not going to have two trains go head-on into each other. So there's a whole bunch of logic and stuff to make sure that the way the junctions are lined only allows for one train to go through a certain route at uh, any particular time. So that's an interlocking. Next, I'd like to go over the Aspect Display Unit, or ADU. The ADU is a combined interface for both what automatic speed control is enforcing, as well as what access is enforcing. So in the left-hand column of the ADU, you'll see a bunch of different signal speeds that ASC can enforce. Uh, in this picture, it's enforcing a speed of 80 miles per hour, which is the highest that it can be on the Long Island Railroad. Access is also enforcing a track speed of 80 miles per hour. This is one case where both the signal speed and the track speed line up to be the same thing, but it's not always that way. One can be higher or lower than the other, and the lowest of the two is what actually gets enforced. There are a bunch of other lights on here, but I'm going, only going to go over a couple of them. The ATC light is the status of automatic train control, which is automatic speed control, ASC. And if it's green, that means it's cut in and will enforce signal speeds. If it's red, that means it's cut out. Similar for access, except there's also a yellow light, which means access is in a degraded state and it doesn't know the track speed. Um, this can happen in non-ASC territory where there aren't access transponders. It can happen if um, the system thinks it missed a transponder set and has missing or incomplete data. Like there's a, certain situations in real life that it can happen. In game, it's simulated to be whenever the track speed is 15 miles per hour or below. So that's when you'll see it in game. And in a degraded state, access will show the track speed as two dashes because it doesn't know a number. The system is enabled and cut in. It's just in a degraded state. Uh, you also have the stop light that's at the very bottom of the ADU. Now that will illuminate if access is enforcing a positive stop at a stop signal. Now I'd like to direct your attention over to special instruction 1402-A on the right hand side. This table shows which fixed signals on the railroad correspond to which numbers on the ADU. So for instance, uh, you pass a medium clear wayside signal. The only two numbers that should ever show up on the ADU are 40 and 30. So this table breaks it all down for you to know what to expect when you pass each signal type. All right, the first aspect is clear, and it means to proceed not exceeding the maximum authorized speed. There's nothing adverse ahead. The path through the next handful of signals should be completely devoid of train traffic. The possible cab signal codes that can appear on the ADU when passing a clear signal are 80, 70, and 60, with even lower codes appearing in a couple edge cases. We'll get to that in a little bit. Passing a clear signal doesn't simply mean you'll have 80 in the cab all the time. You will encounter clear 70 in a few circumstances, such as at locations that have a highest possible cab signal of 70, and when beginning a slowdown progression from 80 due to traffic several blocks ahead. Clear is most typically used for straight movements, but can also be used when switching tracks at 80 and 60 mile per hour crossovers. If switching at a 60 mile per hour crossover, the previous block will drop cab signals to 70, and then upon passing the home signal displaying clear at the interlocking, the cab signals will drop to 60. The signal department sometimes bends their own rules and utilizes clear in ways that result in something lower than 60 on the ADU. One such case is at the 10L and 12L pedestal signals in Jamaica when hitting westbound on mainline tracks 3 and 1. When clear is encountered here, the cab signals will upgrade to 30. This is just one of several instances where the cab signals don't conform with the wayside signals due to the permanent speed restrictions in the area. 
The next signal we're going to discuss is approach medium, and this is a big one, so strap in. The official definition of approach medium is to proceed approaching the next signal at medium speed. If you remember from the definitions section earlier in this video, medium speed is normally 30 miles per hour, but can be up to 40 miles per hour in automatic speed control territory. This signal is utilized in an array of different situations and is probably the most versatile signal on the railroad. The possible cab signal codes that can appear on the ADU and passing approach medium are 80, 70, 60, 40, and 30. The fact that approach medium can give a cab signal code higher than 40 may be extremely confusing to many, and it was always pretty confusing to me. So let's analyze a real life example at Kew Gardens and J Interlocking. You can even play the on the clock part one career scenario in game and experience this for yourself. Anyway, the home signal in this example at J is medium clear 30 because you're switching tracks. The distance signal at Q Gardens for that move is an approach medium 70, meaning that the cab signals will be at 70 when passing. The fact that this signal is approach medium, as opposed to clear, is very important because it implies something up ahead is going to require medium speed. In this case, that's switching tracks at 30 miles per hour. The definition of approach medium prepares you to slow down in time for the next signal. It's your job as the engineer to be at medium speed at the next signal if the situation requires it. Continuing with the above example though, we just passed the distance signal displaying approach medium 70 at Kew Gardens. So what's stopping you from going faster than medium speed upon reaching the next signal at J interlocking, the one where you're switching tracks? Well, is a track circuit about halfway to the interlocking that'll force a cab drop to 30 in this particular situation. So yeah, you'll be at 30 miles an hour upon reaching the interlocking whether you want to or not. But the distance signal is there to tell you that you need to be going medium speed by the time you reach that home signal. Approach medium works a bit differently in zone A. In zone A, approach medium cannot give you a cab signal code higher than 40 so automatic speed control will force you into slowing to medium speed as soon as the front of the train passes the signal. As mentioned previously, approach medium is a very versatile signal that can be utilized in an array of situations. It can be used as part of a normal slowdown progression when getting closer to a train ahead, it can be used as a preparatory signal for a medium speed movement ahead, and can even be used as a diverging aspect when switching tracks at nested interlockings. If you're taking multiple consecutive switches at Harold Interlocking, for example, you may encounter a situation where you have approach medium as a distant signal, approach medium as the first home signal when switching tracks, and then medium clear at the second home signal when switching tracks again. Probably one of the more in-depth and confusing signals to start the video off with, that's for sure. Anyway, let's move on. Alright, next is medium clear. Medium clear simply means to proceed at medium speed within interlocking limits. This will only ever appear at interlocking home signals and usually implies you'll be switching tracks. Medium clear is typically preceded by an approach medium signal, since that's your advanced warning to slow to medium speed before passing. Possible ADU codes when passing medium clear are 40 and 30, where the decided code usually depends on the rated speed of the crossovers being traversed. Medium clear is a solid indication that the route ahead is completely clear for the train that received it, so you won't have to proceed prepared to stop or anything like that. It's essentially the medium speed variant of clear. Approach. Proceed approaching the next signal prepared to stop. Trains exceeding medium speed must at once reduce to that speed. So approach typically precedes a stop signal, but that isn't always the case, more on that in a moment. The possible ADU codes when passing an approach signal are 40, 30, and 15. Approach 15 is used when the next signal is stop or restricting, and there's no track circuit in between. Approach 30 is very common in zone A, but can also be used in LIRR territory when switching tracks at a 30 mph crossover. Approach 40 is the most commonly encountered variant. In areas with many one-head block signals, for example Woodside to Kew Gardens, Approach 40 will be used in circumstances that would normally display an approach medium. This is because the signal head configuration makes it incapable of displaying approach medium, because that requires two heads to do so. This creates a situation where two consecutive wayside signals are displaying approach, and is why an approach signal doesn't always mean there's a stop ahead. For most of the route, assume a stop signal comes next, and you'll be fine. 
Approach slow. Proceed approaching the next signal at slow speed. Trains exceeding medium speed must at once reduce to that speed. This one is pretty much the slow speed variant of approach medium. Possible ADU codes when passing approach slow are 40, 30, and 15. Similar to how approach medium operates, approach slow is an advance warning to be going slow speed before passing the next signal. As a reminder, slow speed is typically 15 miles per hour, but can be up to 30 miles per hour in automatic speed control territory. Approach slow is most commonly seen when continuing straight, but can also be used for diverging movements at interlockings. You should expect the next signal to require slow speed after passing, such as slow clear or slow approach. Slow clear. Proceed at slow speed within interlocking limits. This will only ever appear at interlockings and yard areas where slow speed is enforced. Possible ADU codes when passing slow clear are 30 and 15, with 15 being by far the most common. 30 will only ever appear if in automatic speed control territory and the signal controls movement through a 30 mile per hour crossover. Slow clear is typically preceded by either approach slow or another slow clear signal. Slow clear is a solid indication that the route ahead is completely clear for the train that received it. You won't have to proceed prepared to stop. It's essentially the slow speed variant of clear. Slow approach. Proceed approaching the next signal prepared to stop. Slow speed applies within interlocking limits. This will only ever appear at interlockings and yard areas where slow speed is enforced. Possible ADU codes when passing slow approach are 30 and 15, with 15 again being infinitely more common. 30 will only ever appear if in automatic speed control territory, and the signal controls movement through a 30 mile per hour crossover. Slow approach is typically preceded by either approach slow or slow clear, however you will see multiple strings of slow approach signals in areas such as West Side Yard, because that's the most favorable aspect that those yard signals can display. Slow approach is more commonly seen than slow clear since it's able to be displayed on the two head position light signals and slow clear cannot. You should always expect that the next signal is displaying stop, so control the train accordingly. Restricting. Proceed at restricted speed. There are numerous situations where restricting can appear, but it'll always result in a 15 code on the ADU when passed. Restricting is typically preceded by something quite restrictive such as approach. If you recall from the definition section at the beginning of the video, operating at restricted speed means you have to be able to stop within one half the range of vision short of the next signal, another train, obstruction, derail, or switch improperly lined, looking out for broken rail or crossing protection not functioning, and not exceeding 15 miles per hour. There are many areas of the route where you have to operate at restricted speed not exceeding X miles per hour many of which are less than 15. This includes areas like Atlantic Terminal, Belmont Park, and many of the yards scattered throughout the route. You'll typically see restricting when exiting signaled territory and when following other trains into the same signal block. There are other situations where it pops up, however. In Zone A, restricting has a slightly different meaning. If passed, you must not exceed restricted speed until the entire train has passed a signal displaying a more favorable aspect. If the ADU upgrades mid-block after passing a restricting signal, for example it upgrades from 15 up to 40, the train must run its length, or 500 feet, whichever is greater, past the location where the more favorable cab signal was received, and run its length just means take the length of the train, and you have to travel that length before increasing your speed. Stop and proceed. Stop, then proceed at restricted speed. This typically appears when the signal block is occupied. It's normally only seen at distant and block signals, but you can technically see stop and proceed at some home signals. Woodside is a great example of that. The only possible ADU code when passing stop and proceed is 15. Stop and proceed is typically preceded by an approach signal, however restricting is also possible. The rules for operating at restricted speed were discussed a couple times already, so I won't bother going over that again. You won't be penalized for not stopping before the signal, but do your best to obey the rules. Stop. That's it. Just stop. Do not ever pass a stop signal without explicit permission from the dispatcher. Stop is only ever seen on home signals, and if passed, the only possible ADU code is 15. 
You'll encounter this when the junctions are not lined in your favor at an interlocking, or if the block after the interlocking home signal is occupied by a train. Stop is typically preceded by an approach signal, however restricting is also possible. Alright, now for the Zone A exclusive signals. As a reminder, Zone A is the area from Harold Interlocking, which is just around Woodside, to Penn Station. Let's start with Approach Limited. Approach Limited means to proceed approaching the next signal at limited speed. This signal aspect only appears in Zone A, and it's commonly utilized when approaching a point where you'll be switching tracks at a crossover rated for limited speed, but is also a normal part of some slowdown progressions from a clear signal the most common being your progression into Penn Station in the East River Tunnels. The only possible code on the ADU when passing Approach Limited is 40. Automatic speed control will slow you down to limited speed right away when the front of the train passes the signal. Approach Limited should realistically only appear when continuing straight down the tracks as it's not used as a diverging aspect. The next Zone A exclusive aspect is Limited Clear. And this is pretty much just like medium clear and slow clear and all that. It means to proceed at limited speed until the entire train clears all interlocking switches. It's only ever seen at home signals, and it indicates that the train will be switching tracks at a crossover rated for limited speed. The only possible code on the ADU is 40. Limited clear is pretty much always preceded by an approach limited signal. This is to prepare the train for the 40 mile per hour move that it'll be making. Just like medium clear and slow clear, this can be thought of as the limited speed variety of clear. You won't have a stop signal or anything like that ahead of you. Advanced approach. Advanced approach means to proceed prepared to stop at the second signal. Trains exceeding limited speed must begin the reduction to limited speed as soon as the front of the train passes the signal. This is utilized when the second signal ahead is a stop signal. The only possible ADU code when passing advanced approach is 40. The most common place to see this is in the East River Tunnels, when the entrance into Penn Station is a stop signal, but there are plenty more situations where it will appear. You won't ever switch tracks on an advanced approach, it's just meant for straight movements. Medium Approach Medium Approach means to proceed prepared to stop at the next signal, and trains exceeding medium speed must begin the reduction to medium speed as soon as the signal is clearly visible. So from the onset, you can tell that this is pretty much the same definition as approach, except with the additional nuance of you having to slow down to medium speed as soon as the signal is clearly visible, instead of when you pass the signal. So this is utilized in all situations where you're switching tracks and the next signal is a stop signal. So think of approach as continuing straight and the next signal is a stop signal. Medium approach is when you're switching tracks and the next signal is a stop signal. The only possible code that can appear on the ADU when passing medium approach is 30. So in the definition when it's talking about exceeding medium speed you must begin reducing to medium speed. That medium speed is always 30, not 40. Before I conclude the zone A signals, there is another signal aspect utilized here that should be briefly explained, and that's cab speed. This aspect is only ever meant to be displayed for Amtrak trains, but there are circumstances in the route where it can appear for LIRR trains. Cab speed is represented by flashing green over red, and simply means to proceed not exceeding the speed on the aspect display unit. Per the operating rules, LIRR trains that encounter this aspect must consider it the most restrictive aspect that signal can display, which is typically going to be stop. There is another, lesser known component of the signal system called a code change point. Code change points, or CCPs for short, are locations that don't have a fixed wayside signal, but where changes can be made to the code displayed on the aspect display unit. They are usually accompanied by a track circuit, but that's not always the case. There are two main uses for code change points, to further divide up signal blocks and to force specific cab signal codes depending on the desired behavior of the signal department. Most code change points can be identified by the presence of a track circuit in between the rails. They don't protect junctions and therefore cannot indicate stop. Forced cab signal code drops are extremely common on the LIRR. Some of them are on timers, meaning they'll only affect the cab signal after a predetermined amount of time has passed. 
As an example, the track circuit at the top right near St. Albans is used to force a cab signal drop of 40 when heading westbound. Now that you have at least a basic understanding of each type of signal you encounter on the route, it's time to go through some common signal progressions. A signal progression is a sequence of signals given a specific circumstance. There are an absurd amount of possible progressions, and there's no one-size-fits-all progression for every situation. Signal progressions will gradually bring the train down from higher speeds to lower speeds. The most common signal speed progression when approaching an occupied block is 80, 70, 40, 15. A basic progression utilizing the above principle would be clear, which would give 80 in the cab, approach medium, which would give 70, approach, which would give 40, approach, which would give 15, stop and proceed. A signal progression for switching tracks ahead at a 30 mile per hour crossover might look like clear, which would give 80, approach medium, which would give 70, a code change point, which would give 30, followed by a medium clear, which would give 30. The signal progression for following a train in the East River tunnels would look something like clear, which would give 80, advance approach, which would give 40, approach, which would give 30, and then stop and proceed, which would give 15 when passed. The more that you play the route and observe the sequence of signals, the more aware you'll become about possible progressions. There are some rules and practices pertaining to signals that one should follow when operating on the LIRR. These usually go completely unknown by the train simulation community, so being aware of them will help you get the most out of this route and operate as realistically as possible. Number 1. When the aspect display unit upgrades to a higher value, the train must run its length before increasing speed. So if the ADU upgrades from 40 to 70, the train must travel its length before the engineer is allowed to increase speed past 40 miles per hour. Number 2. When the cab signals change between fixed wayside signals, the cab signal indicator governs movement. So let's say you pass an approach signal and the ADU downgrades to 40. Several seconds later, the ADU upgrades to 70. Since the cab signals changed mid-block, they now govern your movement, not the approach signal that you had previously passed. Number 3. You don't have to run into every signal at the highest possible speed and let automatic speed control break for you. If you know that there's a forced cab signal code drop ahead, you may consider slowing down to the required speed beforehand in the interest of passenger comfort. This is known as dodging codes. Well, that's it. That's pretty much everything that I can teach you about signaling on the Long Island Railroad, at least in the areas represented in the game. There are other signal aspects and rules that are utilized throughout the LIRR network, but those are outside the scope of the route released for Train Simulator Classic. I hope that you were able to get a lot of great information out of this guide and that it helps you operate on the Long Island Railroad as authentically as possible. If you have questions or comments, I encourage you to post them in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching.